Oakland was known for their toughness. The guy, the people there in Oakland know basketball. They go all the way back to Rick Barry, Al Adams, mm. and those type of guys. They know they basketball. You know, Wilt, Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain. They know they basketball. Okay. Even Bill Russell was there yeah, in San Francisco. Yeah, he San played in San Francisco. Exactly, so yeah, exactly. yeah. So they, they very know they well basketball. know. Yeah. So yeah. there wasn't if you if you out, not out there playing your best, you're gonna get booed. And they know, hmm. um, they knew who wasn't giving they all, and they'll boo you. They and they and they we were sold out, even though we wasn't good my first year. We sold out because they loved the game of basketball. But when we started winning. We were selling out, and it was tickets all over the place, and and and, and um, you know, it, it 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 was a great atmosphere, like it is now, with mm-hmm. the Golden State Warriors, or when they was winning championships. Oh my God, that was one of the best atmosphere that you could ever be in. Well, it kind of happens quickly, right? So you said your first year you weren't that good, but this run TMC thing happens very quickly. And by year two, uh, you're upsetting the Spurs in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, You're playing the Lakers in the second round of the playoffs. And we're going to touch on kind of the back end of how that fell apart pretty quickly. But what is that like? I mean, it seems like in the flash of the eye, you know, you're not only in the NBA, but you're part of this like pop culture a national movement that transcends mm-hmm. basketball. And Jelani and I were talking before this, like, I don't think, I think this was kind of a first of its time thing. You didn't really see like the music, the hip hop music <laughs> enter the NBA until run TMC. Mm-hmm. And you're right smack dab in the middle of it as the starting point guard. Like just what is that like? Cause it, it happens. It seemed like it happened pretty much like overnight. First of all, that was a big mistake. We had run. Really? DMC. We had run. No, I'm talking about, we had run DMC. Mm-hmm. Come out and announce us in front of the Los Angeles Lakers, in Ooh. front of Magic Johnson. Okay, Ooh. in the play, in the in, in, the, in the ninety in, in the ninety one playoffs, ninety one playoffs. So, as you know, and then we had you know they had all the movie stars. We had all the rappers come. Mm-hmm. You know, E forty, uh, uh, MC Hammer. Uh, short, too short, of course. <laughs> SWV. Yeah. We had all the, mm-hmm. in Vogue. We had mm-hmm. all those people come in, and when Run DMC announced us, I kind of looked over there and peeked over there to what Magic was doing, and he had his his guys in a huddle. I mean, a deep huddle, and I I could imagine. But what what I guess he told me is like they making a mockery out of this. They not mm-hmm. serious about it. Man, he came out there and started whipping that ball around, and they started running up and down the court, throwing no look fast. <laughs> you saw James Worthy dunking and Byron Scott making shots, and D. Bach rebounding, bringing up past the Magic Mac throwing back. There. Man, it was it was a clinic. It was a clinic, and uh, right then and there, we knew it was a big mistake to have that happen in front of Lakers. If we did it in front of San Antonio, we would have been cool. But the Lakers, mm. Magic had it, that <laughs> mindset. This is some BS. They're not going to be doing us like this and thinking that they're going to win. But, yeah, the hip-hop culture was, I mean, it was booming back then. And, I mean, we had, you know, in Oakland, they had some live rappers and, and singers, and, and we seen them all the time, you know, not, not only at our games, at the A's games, at mm. the Raiders mm. games, when the Raiders was there, or even San Francisco 49ers games. So it was live then, and, um, you know, it was a perfect setup for us. The Bay is cracking at this time. I was oh, born in black. Oakland. I moved to San Diego in the fourth grade. I'm thinking you just hit it on the head. The A's are cracking. Mm-hmm. They winning championships. San Francisco's cracking, winning Both championships. Teams. Both teams. Both teams, yeah. You know what I mean? The Raiders are doing the Raider thing. Yep. So it was it was a championship city, Tim. Yes, yes. They weren't playing. There was like, it was like a title or nothing. And yep. then I feel like y'all came in with that new culture, yep. new energy. As Like Dylan said, I, I was talking about like, when I was growing up in Oakland, it was like, you know, Michael Jordan was listening to the Commodores and Earth, Wind and Fire. When Tim got into the league, you know, we started seeing Too Short. We started right. seeing rappers. We started yeah. seeing De La Soul. Yeah. The music, the, the, the Nike commercials, another thing we'll get a hold to. But even as far as like inside the NBA and right. Ahmad Rashad, right. he was leaning into hip hop right. and the, the, the music in and out of the commercials, yeah. the hip hop. And then it was like, Run TMC. Exactly. And then in the part of Run TMC, there was, you know, Mitch, The Rock, he was nice. Yeah. There was obviously Muddy, but you were like 
the clutch. You know what I mean? Because you not only the skill set and the but you're a point guard, but you just brought a different set of 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 just vibe coming from Chicago. Right. You know what I mean? So that's confidence. what I saw on the outside. Confident. There it is. There it's it is. confidence. You know, I, I there it is. you know, I I I brought the team confidence. You know, when somebody, mm -hmm. you know, Chris and Mitch, uh, they didn't talk a lot. You know, but I wasn't gonna let another team get hyped in front of us or start talking to us and chipping us. No, 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 no. Yo, man, we're not, we not taking that. Yo, Molly, let's go, man. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go 40 on him. He cannot stick you. Mitch, take him down low and bang him. You the rock, let's do it. And that's mm -hmm. what I brought to the team. I brought some, some liveness to the team. I brought some flavor to the team. I brought some confidence to the team. And they, and they, just, it, they just went with it. When somebody started talking stuff, then I started – and my team just started right behind me, like, okay, we're going to take you, we're going to come right behind you and take you, take your lead, and you just take us to that next level. And that's what I did. Once we, right. I came in, you know, I had the crossover, a little flavor here, a little flavor there. You get the, you get the crowd in it. Sometimes we had, we had the visiting crowd on our side too. They wanted to come see mm -hmm. us too. They heard mm -hmm. about Run TMC. Hey, Let's see what they got. We and every time mm. we stepped out on that floor, we put on the show and we had fun doing it. We had great teammates, you know, Tom Tobin, Jim Peterson, Judd Bushler. You know, we mm. had great teammates, man. That 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 that, that uh uh you know that that followed our lead and, and and had fun with us. So it happened. The the birth of Run TMC happens in the blink of an eye, and then it seems like. You know, it, it went the other way just as quickly. So you, you mentioned that Lakers series, you lose in, in round two. That's fine. They decide to trade Mitch Richmond the following year or at that offseason. The story goes that Don Nelson said he felt pressure from ownership or, or management to maybe go bigger. So they bring in Billy Owens. You guys have another really good season right after that. Uh, but then but then after that, it starts to go downhill. You hurt your knee. Uh, the team drafts Chris Weber and gets him number one overall. So now you have uh, Chris Weber, Latrell Sprewell, Chris Mullen, and Tim Hardaway. But the problem is that Tim Hardaway busted his knee. And back, you know, busting your knee in the early 90s is a lot mm -hmm. different than busting your knee now. Slower process, worse technology. But I, I wanted to ask you, you know, 1993, 1994, you're, you're out for the season, you hurt your knee, and you're watching this new guy, Chris Weber, probably one of the most ready-made rookies that entered the league in, in some time at that point. Um, and just two years before, you know, you were the guy and the city was on fire, run TMC was all over the news, all over the TV. And now you're sort of like sitting from the sidelines watching Chris Weber. And, you know, I, I think it's probably complex because I would think that it's frustrating. Like imagine if you were on the floor for that season, how far the team could have gone. But you know, I would think that mentally it, it, it isn't the best situation to be the guy. And then two years later, you got to watch your team, you know, play really well without you out there. I mean, it, it, it's it's complex, but I would love to hear just what that time was like for you. Because like I said, blink of an eye, run TMC is born, blink of an eye, uh, it's gone. And you're on the sideline, you're out for a whole year. What was that like? Don Nelson finally came out and said that he made a mistake by trading. Uh, Mitch Richmond, he mm. did. He did, mm. and um, um, he did. Um, that was the beginning to the end of Run TMC and the Golden State Warriors mm. at that particular mm. time in that era. You, 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 you have a core there, and you fit around your core. All right, you fit around that core. You get some some pieces, and I'm gonna tell you this: Alton Lister came there, and he was gonna be our center, but he tore his ACA, uh, not his ACL. He tore his Achilles. That year, when we started to roll, he came there at the 90-91 season. He tore mm. his Achilles, and he never was the same. Like a, a defensive stopper, putting the ball in a basket, you know, mm. turning around, jump shooter. That changed his whole game. So when when we when we got Billy Owens, you know, um, a lot of people wasn't feeling Billy Owens. Why That's not? What, because I played with B.O. Was it was it is it was his personality or is his game? No, it wasn't a, nothing about his game, nothing about his personality. It we had our set core. And our set core was Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond, and Chris Mullen. 
you know, it should be. And, and it was and, and it was successful it too. Was like yeah. it was going well. Yeah. And we yep. was the only thing you had to do was put pieces around us, and mm-hmm. we would have made it work. We, if we had a center, because we's always short. If we had mm-hmm. a center, who knows what we could have done with the Lakers? Well, what about what about Chris Webber? I know a big man. Well, I'm, no, no, no. I'm gonna say this: if we if we if we never would have traded Mitch, we never would have been in the Chris Webber yep. sweepstakes. Sweepstakes. So. Right. So after that happened, we get to uh, get to uh, Chris Webber's sweet sweepstakes, and Chris Webber, uh, uh, we 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 traded Penny Hardaway because we drafted Penny Hardaway. We traded from Swift Swap for them, and we get Chris Webber. He was trying to get his contract together. The first day of practice, they signed. He gets his contract all worked out. That's the first huge thing. contract. Huge contract. What was it like a seven know. year? It, it, it was, Monumental. It was, yeah, it was yeah, back. It was yeah. back. It started the whole CBA right. thing but, but, where they said y'all making was, too much money. No, no. You know who did that? That was Big Dog in yeah. Milwaukee. Facts. That, Facts. You know, he got a hundred million. Years. He got a hundred million. True. Yeah. Right. So that's right what happened. Yep. So no, we was um. So we signed him. I go down with the ACL. If I was around, uh, him, 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 and him and Don Nelson bumped heads. They was bumping, mm. and I was never around because I was trying to get myself together. And Nelly was like, and Chris Mullen was like, "Yo, you need to start coming around." Chris Webber, he'll probably listen to you. But at that particular time, it was too late. Chris Webber mm. was like, "Look, I'm not gonna be listening to him. I'm just gonna do my own thing." But what, but what Don Nelson was trying to help Chris Webber realize is that you could be that type of ball player right now that you was. In Sacramento, you can handle the ball. You can be point forward. You can start the offense. We can hit you at the elbow. You can pass. We want to use your strength. Mm-hmm. And that's what Nelly saw. He saw his strengths as a rookie. He didn't like that. He wanted to get the ball down low, bag people in, and do other things. But Don mm-hmm. Nelson saw his strengths, what he could do, like he was doing in Sacramento mm-hmm. early. So they was bumping heads and everything, but if I was there, I would I, I could have settled uh, Chris Webber and made him understand, look, this is how we want you to play. This is how we need for you to play if all of us is going to be successful, you know? Mm-hmm. And just like they did in Sacramento with Jason Williams with uh, uh, and their whole crew. Peja, the, 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 the whole thing. You yep. know, Vladi uh, Divac, you know, just, just playing – we could have played that same style his rookie year if I wasn't hurt, but I was hurt and they bumped heads. And then we, uh, and then that's when Nelly, uh, 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 got let go. And then, um, uh, mm-hmm. we traded Chris Weber somewhere to Washington. And, mm-hmm. and then that's when everything, but we, we had Chris Gallon, we had Big Alexander. We said, st- we still had a good crew, but our, our nucleus wasn't together again. How about Latrell Sprewell? What, oh, what was that component of it like? Latrell Sprewell came in, um, needed to needed to work on his ball handling skills. He could shoot the ball a little bit. Uh, need to work on that. But you know, mm. he, he, each and every year, we knew he could play defense. He was always in the pass lane, always quick. Alabama type of player, play defense in a pass lane. But he worked on his game, and, and each year he came back. You saw a different Latrell Sprewell. Mm-hmm. You saw a stronger Latrell Sprewell. Mm-hmm. You saw a more confident Latrell Sprewell. You saw mm-hmm. a Sprewell that that his jump shot. He was very sure of his jump shot. And he, a spree that would go left sometimes. Yeah, sometimes spree that would go mm-hmm. left sometimes. He'd sometimes catch mm-hmm. and go left. Mm-hmm. But you know, um, you just saw his game started to flourish, and that really helped uh, his game and our game. And uh, but you know, we still need the pieces around us. And, and and it never happened, so uh, uh, it was tough. 